Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I am going to be trying out these Mia Himi jelly gouache paints. I've seen these going around for the past like months slash years. I feel like I'm a little bit too late to the party, but I just, they just look really fun to use. So I got my own set. I got the 18 color set and it, the packaging itself is so cute. Have you seen like this cute little mint color? I'm obsessed and I'm really excited to try them out. So I'm just unpacking all of them and, you know, peeling off all these like yogurt lids, kind of. It was very hard not to like eat these. <laughs> I probably just don't, don't eat the paint. But I was like, this, these look like food. So yeah, here I'm just unpacking my little set of gouache paints. And I was a little nervous to do like a full painting in gouache because I haven't used gouache in quite a while. Or, sorry, gouache or gouache. It depends on how you say them. I say gouache and I haven't used them in like a few years now So I was a bit nervous that I'd forgotten how to use gouache, but So yeah, here is all my paints unpacked and I had my drawing all ready to paint on I had the sketch all done. So I was just taping it down to my board and Let's begin I thought I'd do a little voiceover today talking about uh, doing art full time. I asked you guys on my Instagram what topics you'd like me to talk about in my voiceovers and this one was highly requested. So uh, I'm gonna be talking about basically like my experience of working full time in the creative industry and doing art full time and how it differs from, you know, before I did art full time. Yeah, so basically what I do for work, for anyone who doesn't know, I'm a freelance animator and illustrator. And basically that means that I get picked up for different projects for, from different studios or different clients and I work on an hourly rate basis. So that just means that I have my rates for, you know, how much I work per hour. And then depending on how long it takes me to complete a project, it, it that's how much I get paid pretty much for that project. And um, it's pretty nice because I don't like have a strict schedule. I can pick and choose my hours. Uh, so it's really nice in that uh, respect. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is what what's like what it's like scheduling myself because you know you'd think that working in the creative industry it's all very loosey-goosey and you know it's all very like oh when i'm inspired i'll do it but it's not really like that because sometimes you have a deadline and you just have to churn things out so it's important to like schedule yourself and create a sort of uh, uh, a routine and a sort of being like strict with yourself so like as you would expect a boss to be strict with you so you can actually deliver on time on your deadlines. I normally try to do my work day starting at like nine or 10 in the morning and then working till five, giving myself a lunch break. Um, it's just how I would usually expect to work if I were working in a studio. Um, of course, working from home this past year has also, you know, made a lot of people uh, have to adapt to this, people who were used to working in a an office or like a studio environment. So yeah, it's, it's a lot of just like working from home rules where you just kind of have to be strict with yourself sort of so you don't get too behind on work. So yeah, scheduling myself, it's very important and it keeps me on track and it also separates the parts of my day that are work parts and the non-work parts. And that like helps me a lot mentally. Um, I think that's a very important aspect of, you know, working from home is to like separate work and leisure as it can really like <laughs> hinder you uh, mentally and emotionally if um, you just start like mushing all those together. So I do try to like be away from my desk and my work after 5 p.m. Um, so then I can, you know, do other stuff that I like. And sometimes that is art outside of work. And that's something that I wanted to talk about as well is, do I still like art since I started doing it as a job? Is it the same? Has it changed? I get that question quite a lot, actually. Yeah, but no, I haven't stopped liking doing art because thankfully, like a lot of the work that I do for work, 
um, it's quite different from the work that I choose to do in my free time. So stuff like this, painting with gouache or sitting down for, for like a few hours and paint is not exactly what I would do for work work. Um, I'm normally doing something to do with animation or drawing assets and usually for these projects and client work I'm mainly working off of a style that um, they've asked me to sort of recreate or um, use as inspiration so it's I'm never actually working in my own style unless the client asks for that so Thankfully, that still remains as my sort of my thing uh, that I can do for myself. And um, yeah, I, I've just, I found that I've, I've actually been a lot more creative in my art outside of work recently because I feel more of a need to be creative since I spend all day sort of doing art that isn't for me. Since I'm still being creative and since I'm still doing art, like my creative part of my brain is still working. So I feel like I get all the ideas for my personal pieces while I'm doing work and then I get to do them after work. So I quite like that aspect of uh, working full time in art is that uh, my creative brain is always on, but I get to actually like develop these ideas while I work and then actually turn them into something on the weekends or after work. But this does have like a downside, obviously. Exhaustion and creative burnout is a very real thing that can happen and I've felt it happen uh, quite a few times already. So if you're working a nine to five job for a few weeks on a project uh, and you're doing art pretty much from nine to five and you're looking at screens from nine to five, after you finish work, it's not exactly the most appealing thing <laughs> thinking about doing more art or staring at more really minute detailed work. You kind of just want to sit and stare at a wall for a while and like <laughs> until your eyes readjust and reset and sometimes my art my eyes really like just stop working after a day's work it really depends on what i'm working on and how uh focused i'm actually uh having to be on that project so yeah there are some weeks uh where i will probably go without drawing in my free time but then again as, as I normally am, I can go a few like days or a week or so without drawing for myself and then all this like pent up creativity like builds up inside me and then I'll spend like a whole weekend drawing. It happens a lot. Uh, I'm a very binge, per bingey person. I don't know if that's a word, but yeah, I'm a very bingey person. So <laughs> I don't know if that's good or bad. I think it depends, but that's how, that's how my brain works. Of course, exhaustion and creative burnout is very real and I think my advice in terms of that is to actually give yourself a break and develop other hobbies. Uh, since I finished university and started doing a full-time job in art, I have tried to pick up a, a bunch of other hobbies because sometimes, as I said, after working nine to five in art, you don't really want to be doing more art afterwards. It's kind of, you know, you're you're tired. You want to do something a little bit more recreational. So, you know, I've picked up crocheting and uh, sometimes I go roller skating and it's, you know, something completely different from having your brain active and and, and and thinking constantly. I just kind of want to shut my brain off and, and, and not think about anything. This does also prompt the question that I get a lot is how to stay motivated to do art outside of work. And this again kind of circles back to giving yourself time off because if you keep pushing it and pushing it even after work uh, it, it can probably lead to like you know exhaustion and burnout and you, you'll probably get you know art block and stuff like that also when you're super tired you're probably not going to be very creative or have you know the energy to be creative so it's completely fine to wait it out until you feel more energized like after a, a good night's sleep or after a relaxing weekend and the reality is that you know that's how it is sometimes you have to give yourself the time uh, to to readjust your brain to being creative for yourself. I'm trying to get used to the idea of that. Uh, staying motivated, it's pretty much just, um, as I said, scheduling in your time and not overworking your creative brain. 
if you if you overwork it it's just gonna fry and then you're not gonna want to do art for a while Also, um, removing the pressure of having to, you know, churn out art for your uh, social media or whatever, because um, I feel like that's a lot of pressure uh, added on in nowadays is that you have to like have these full rendered pieces to post on social media and whatever, because the algorithm's gonna um, not favor you if you don't post these things regularly but like just removing that pressure from yourself will do wonders i'll just if i feel like i want to do art or if i feel like i'm losing my my touch or something with 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 drawing uh when i'm full of work i'll try to like sit down and just do a bunch of doodles and scribbles and basically sketches that i know i'm not gonna show anyone or i know i i'm not gonna post anywhere um because it not only just rekindles my love for art and uh, my motivation to to do you know drawing but it just makes me actually feel a lot less stressed because mindless sketching is when i actually get to turn off my brain so uh, i just i just try to give myself like no pressure drawing times after work and i'll do it like you know in bed or on on the couch watching a tv show something really relaxing that doesn't require brain power is kind of my go-to during the week so the next thing i wanted to discuss is how my art in my free time has actually changed since i started working in in art full time and I kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, but it has changed in terms of how different uh, my pieces are becoming. I feel like uh, since now I allocate time to draw, I feel like I uh, I, pr I prepare mentally for those times. So I have more of a plan when I actually get to the drawing portion of my week and I'll have like all these ideas kind of in my brain stored up uh, so for example for this painting I'd actually been sketching it out for a few days like roughly in my sketchbook and thinking about oh I'm gonna use my gouache for this and I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna make oh maybe actually I'll I'll add a cute background and I feel like my 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 drawings and my artworks are becoming a lot more thought out Previously, when I wasn't working in art full time, I think I'd sometimes do paintings where I'd, I'd sit down and all in one go, I'd start and finish the drawing in one sitting. And, you know, that that's, you know, not ideal, I've come to realize, because a fresh pair of eyes is very important when uh, doing artwork. So recently i've been you know doing my pieces in installments so i'll do them over the course of many days and that's actually really refreshing because sometimes i'll look back onto a drawing a few days later and i'll be like actually i'm gonna change this and i'm gonna add this and i think this will look nice a fresh pair of eyes completely changes the way i look at it so i feel like in that sense my my artworks just become a lot more thought out it just seems like it's got more intent and i'm generally more happy with my artworks uh when i complete them i obviously don't do as much but when i do i'm really really happy with how they come out so it's become a lot more quality over quantity i think uh, because i'm you know so preemptively preparing to paint and draw that I just become a lot more precious with it when when I actually do have the time to draw for myself like for example with this painting here I had been all week thinking about oh my god I can't wait to paint on Saturday it's gonna be so so fun I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do that and then all during the week I was having these different ideas and having different inspirations that all kind of compiled into this one painting um, circling back to finding the time and energy to do art, I feel like with finding new hobbies for you know your daily life, it's important to balance out your hobbies and your art because in your brain, no matter how hard you try, uh, if you are working full time in art, art is going to just kind of become work for you in your head. When you do art, even for yourself, it's it's gonna be all kind of in the same place. So. You have to be able to separate working for yourself and, and working for work. 
And the way that I found to do this the most effective way, I guess, for myself, of course, it's different for everyone, but the way that I do it is that I I schedule like a time or like after after five, I get to do whatever I want. I try not to uh, do art during breaks, during work, and I try not to do art at my desk during the week because on the weekends it's fine because I'm you know weekend mood weekend headspace but during the week I really avoid doing any sort of artwork at my desk because my working at my desk during the week is just in my head is just work for work it's my job so it's just not the same doing art over here and I don't want to um, influence my brain to think that even doing this art for myself just because I'm at my desk it's going to feel less good to do it because I don't know how to explain it. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry if this makes no sense, but yeah, I just don't want to mix the two up in my head subconsciously. So yeah, I allocate different spaces to draw. So drawing in my bed has become like a, a very prominent space where I get to just unwind and draw. And uh, it's like a no pressure zone. Drawing on the sofa as well, very no pressure zone. And uh, drawing on my iPad has honestly been the Hail Mary for this because at work I use my computer, you know, my drawing tablet for most of the work that I do. And my iPad is pretty much reserved for work for myself, which is quite lovely. So when I pick up my iPad, I know that it's like a no pressure drawing time for me. And yeah, I've I've um, I've just been trying to sort of accept that it it is a little different, and it's, and it's it's gonna take a while for my brain to you know adjust. Yes, I have been working full time for like almost a year, but it's still hard to make your brain understand that there's art for work and then there's art for yourself. Because for me, art is very much therapy and I use it a lot in terms of, you know, getting my brain on track and, and, and lessening my symptoms of depression and anxiety. So I'd never want to get to a place where I don't enjoy doing art because I've conditioned myself to think of it as work constantly. So I am trying very hard to avoid that and I want to keep the art that I do for myself still therapeutic and still um, enjoyable for myself. Um, not to say that I don't enjoy the work that I do for my job. It is fun. It's it's a it's a great job to have. I'm very grateful that I get to work in the creative industry. It's just that it's it, it's not exactly the work I would do for myself since it's you know it's client work. So yeah, keeping that that distance and that that barrier between client work and your work for your job and the work that you do for your for yourself and your brain it's very important i feel like the weird thing that sometimes muddles that up for me is doing work for my shop so i besides my work as um as a freelance animator and illustrator, I also have my online shop and sometimes I'll be drawing something just for myself and then my brain it just starts thinking, oh, this could be nice for the shop. Oh, will this, will this sell nice? Will this, will this sell as a sticker? Will this, will it immediately starts trying to capitalize what I'm making and it's, it's a hard thing to turn off because, <laughs> you know, it's, it, it's just, it's just a weird new brain cell that I feel like I've acquired that I'm still trying to figure out how to work with uh, <laughs> and how to turn off when I wanted to turn off. I'm just trying to separate the part of my brain that is looking at art as, you know, a way to pay rent and, and get paid and just the art that I do that makes me happy and makes me feel nice in my soul. So I'll get back to you once I have, you know, some more concrete advice in that department. But as of now, I am still trying to, to get better at that myself. Another thing that I wanted to circle back and talk about, and I think this kind of, you know, circles back to talking about exhaustion and creative uh, burnout is, you know, maintaining your, your health um, <laughs> with working so much in art. I know that art is not exactly the most risky job, but it does come with its um, downfalls. I suffer a lot from wrist pains and eye strain 
And yes, I know that there are things that I can do to make this better, but sometimes when you have to churn out some work from, you know, for a deadline, it, there's only so much you can do, you know? So I've actually invested in some glasses over the years and I have a wrist brace for when my wrist gets really bad. There are some times that I've, uh, I've, I've gone so overboard that I actually had to take time off of work on a project because my wrist was so unbearably painful, uh, even with a, br with a brace on and, you know, sometimes I have to take medication because it gets so inflamed. So yeah, this is another reason why I try to avoid doing as much art outside of work because some, sometimes my wrist and my eyes need a break, otherwise they, <laughs> they'll they get bad beyond uh, repair and I don't want that. So this is where my all, all my new hobbies come in. Uh, I Instead of doing art, but I feel like I need to do something, I'll do, you know, crochet or play on my Switch a little bit, which, you know, I understand is not still the best for your eyes, but it's a different activity from what I've been doing um, all day. So, you know, it's a, it's a change of pace, I guess. I've been trying to, you know, do more outside activities, even though, you know, at the moment it's still not the most easy thing to do. Of course, COVID hasn't really helped much in this department. I don't know if you can tell, but yeah, since uh, working and, you know, be being relaxed and doing your leisurely activities are all in the same sort of four walls of your apartment it's kind of hard to differentiate when you're meant to be relaxing and when you're meant to be working so again this is where you know scheduling yourself comes very into play and changing which room you're in um i i genuinely feel like moving just from my room to the living room immediately changes my headspace of like what i'm doing i could be doing the exact same thing but it'll immediately feel different if I go and draw on the sofa as opposed to drawing at my desk. I barely spend any time in my room on the weekends only to sleep because otherwise I just, I feel like I sleep differently and I just don't feel as creative uh, during my weekend off. And I like to draw on my weekends because um, as I said, I spend all week thinking about these drawings that I wanna make and then the weekend is the time that I actually get to, to do them. That's kind of all the things that I wanted to mention uh, today for this voiceover topic of doing art full time. Um, overall, doing art full time is an absolute blessing. I love uh, that this is my job and I get to do all of this. And yeah, I'm still learning myself how to overcome some of the hurdles, but these are just some of the tips that I thought I'd share with you guys. And yeah, here you can see I'm just adding sort of the last few details to the painting. I absolutely love how it came out. And these gouache are so, so fun. I honestly highly recommend them. They are so fun to work with. And I don't really know the science behind them, but they stay wet like the whole time. And I'm recording this voiceover like a few days later and I opened up my gouache to show Devin and they were all still wet. And I was like, oh my God, this is awesome. I don't know how they stay like that. <laughs> they were just really fun to work with and they really reignited my love for gouache. I hadn't, as I said at the beginning, I haven't used gouache in like two or three years. So when I started using these, I was like, oh my God, I remember why I love them so much. I've been, I've been missing out. So I'm definitely gonna be using these a lot more from here on out. So expect some more videos of gouache paintings. Yeah, I just really enjoyed doing a full rendered piece traditionally. I've been really enjoying I'm a Wonder videos on YouTube and stuff. Um, I've always been a fan, but recently I've been uh, having their videos on, on YouTube while I work. And yeah, they work a lot with gouache and I just love the work that they do. So I've been really inspired by that. I just thought it'd be like a really cute drawing of like this girl who's just gone out to pick up some fresh oranges and she's just returning. It's got this beautiful little um, cloud background. And yeah, uh, I was just really happy with how it turned out. All very pastel-y and pastel colors. I also tried out this new thing where I did like the line art in paint 
after the fact and i'm very very like happy with how it came out i normally don't really do line art in my traditional art i just go with the sort of the line art that comes through with the the the, the sketch but since it's gouache and it's a lot more opaque i thought i'd add a little bit of a line art to my painting and i think it looks really cool and graphic-y so yeah new stuff that i'm really enjoying And then it was time to peel off all the tape, peel, 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 the most fun part of painting in my opinion. And this is the final painting that I did today. Um, it was super fun. It honestly made me feel so happy doing this drawing. I had so, so much fun. And I really enjoyed myself with my new set of uh, jelly gouache. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you had a good time. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in my next video. Bye-bye.